here's the process. You start with a 3D model. And this can be created in CAD, SOLIDWORKS, Fusion 360, Maya, or any other 3D modeling program, as long as it's exported as an OBJ or STL file. A slicer application like Cura or Simplify 3D then turns the 3D model into a toolpath, which is readable by the 3D printer. The printer takes the material and then squeezes it through a hot nozzle in a very specific pattern, melting small lines of plastic into a larger complete object. Now let's go over the Vision Miner model of how we go into every project we do. First, we look at design and modeling. This is super important because 3D printers do have limitations. You've got to take into account the layer style printing that you're doing, putting down the material in layers. You can design parts specifically to be stronger and print faster than their conventional counterparts. Number two, we evaluate the part. We evaluate parts to determine potentially problematic or difficult sections of the part, which will need to be tuned or redesigned in order to print properly. Easy parts don't require much tuning, but once you get into bridges, and overhangs, and small gaps or holes, sharp corners or long parts, especially in the high performance thermoplastics, uh, there's a lot more legwork to making the process work. So number three, slicing. Slicers are a software that turn a 3D model into a toolpath. A toolpath is basically code which tells the 3D printer where to move. This is where tuning comes in. There are thousands of settings that the operator needs to tune in order to print properly. For basic materials, most slicers also have a beginner option, but this doesn't always work that great. There are plenty of slicers to choose from out there on the internet. The industry standards are Simplify 3D and Cura, followed closely by Slicer. These brands have large community followings and years of resources online in the forums and everywhere else that you can learn from still today. Now, number four is tuning. There are literally hundreds of settings to choose from, which will affect the way your part is printed. From basic settings like temperatures, retraction, and speed, uh, there are also many advanced settings like outline overlap and thin wall behavior settings. All these come into play when you're printing your parts. When you print a part and it doesn't come out perfect, this is where tuning comes in. Based on the error, you'll be able to determine what settings to change and fix your part. So number five is producing. Once you've tuned your part, you can go into production. Maybe you're just doing a one-off part for a friend or you may be printing a thousand fasteners for an electronics project that you're doing. Depending on your goals, there's a lot of different ways to set up the G-code to meet your needs. For example, printing batches of multiple parts at the same time. So after the tuning process, you can effectively print that part over and over and over again with the same results. Anyway, we hope you like this video. Feel free to ask questions in the comments below. And as always, hit that subscribe and notification bell. Have a positive day and we'll see you on the next video.